Finishing up the brake job on this 1970 uh, Mercedes 280SC, I went ahead and uh, bled the brakes and uh, used the uh, good old Motive Products uh, power brake bleeder. And uh, so that job was all complete now. I didn't, I didn't decide to film that because there's already uh, a couple of different videos on my channel with the uh, Ford F-250 and the uh, late Crown Victoria about uh, bleeding brakes. And the procedure is precisely the same. The only difference is, is you have this uh, different adapter for this uh, particular car. It just screws right on in place of the reservoir cap. So you uh, basically just apply pressure with the... Uh, brake bleeder on that side <clears throat> then you come over here and uh, crack open a bleeder screw which now has a cap on it and uh, let the fluid purge out of there until you see no more air bubbles pretty much straightforward and uh, another word of caution when uh, replacing brake pads in general not necessarily rebuilding calipers but when you have these pistons pushed all the way far back on their bores you're gonna have a lot of space between the brake pad and the rotor so what you do not want to do is uh, immediately get in the car and start driving on the road. You want to pump that brake pedal of enough times to uh, force these pistons back out against the rotor or the pads against the rotor so you have very little clearance there because the first few pumps of that pedal, you're not going to have any braking action. So um, the brake job on this thing is basically all complete. All i got to do is drive the car and let the pads bed in and that will clean up these rotors, get them nice and shiny again. It will be as good as new, but um, if you guys remember, um, when I took out this axle initially, or the axle shaft initially, a lot of gear oil came out. So the very last thing I've got to do is um, basically just go ahead and change the gear oil. And um, on this car, it's very easy to do. I hope you guys can see. You can sort of see the uh, independent suspension on this car you've got a CV joint there or U joint there on that side and then the axle on the other side so it's basically a swing axle very similar to a Dana 44 it's a very early uh, design of our independent rear suspension which is kind of neat and um, they make it very easy to uh, change the gear oil on this particular vehicle you've got a uh, 14 I think it's a 14 millimeter Here's the uh, special uh, Mercedes tool for that. You don't have to have a special tool, but it always helps. Just basically a 14 millimeter Allen. And you've got a fill plug here. And um, you've got a drain plug pointing to it, but I can't get it right here. So what we want to do, I've already loosened everything up. You want to make sure you can get that fill plug out of there because you want to be able to get gear oil back in it and this will also allow the uh, allow air to get in here and help the uh, fluid drain out that much better and we'll go ahead and loosen the bottom one it's pretty cold out here so this stuff's going to come out fairly thick because I of course, haven't been able to drive the car. If there's any left in here at all. Uh, there's some. Not a whole lot, though. I think it's just better to go ahead and drain the oil. The oil only, uh, it was recently changed, uh, about maybe a year and a half ago only has maybe 5,000 miles on it, but since I don't know how much oil was lost when I took out the axle shafts, it's always better just to err on the side of caution and just do a complete drain and refill. And um, I've got the car up in the air right now, so that's going to make it a little bit inaccurate as far as filling it up, so I'm going to have to uh, basically just go ahead and let it finish draining and um, then I'll lower the car to the ground and go ahead and fill it up basically just like on a um, regular differential like on the ten and a quarter inch I did on the F-250 or the 8.8 .8 on the Crown Vic 
I'll fill it up until it just starts to run out of the, the fill hole. So let me uh, let that finish draining, which will take a while when it's cold like this. And we'll put the plug back in and uh, start the filling process. Okay, now the gear oil is completely changed and you just want to make sure that um, you fill it all the way to the bottom of that fill plug, maybe just a couple millimeters below, and that way you may be sure you have uh, just the right amount. It takes approximately two and a half liters, and on uh, this car it's actually really easy to do. You don't have to take off the differential cover and put sealer on there and all that kind of stuff. That's one of the benefits of uh, having something uh, designed to be maintained. So basically this car is now finished. It's back on the ground and uh, ready for its maiden voyage. Got everything all finished. The you know wheels and tires put back on and hubcats put back on. And uh, over here it's all the components that I had to replace. I had to do the uh, parking brake shoes and uh, slot nut and lock ring and inner and outer axle seals, axle bearings, rebuild the uh, brake calipers with new dust boots and piston seals, install new um, brake hardware, the um, anti-rattle springs from here, of course installed new brake pads, and then the um, passenger side and driver side flexible brake lines. And looking at the date code on this hose, I don't know if you guys can see, but it does indeed say 1970. So that, is, that was the original 43 year old brake hose. That's about maybe 10 brake hoses behind being changed. And then last but not least, went ahead and uh, changed out the gear oil. Went with a 7590 synthetic gear oil. Because I lost some gear oil and I took out the actual set shafts and didn't know how much I lost. So it's just always better to play it safe and uh, do a complete drain and fill. And uh, I've had that particular kind of oil in there before. That's what was in there originally when I um, had this brake problem. And uh, when this rotor got so hot that it glowed cherry red and in combination with all that gear oil being in there and contaminating the parking brake shoes, there was a real good chance that this car could have caught fire with that kind of heat going on. And I'm very lucky that it didn't. Very fortunate that it didn't. And um, one of the reasons uh, may be that um, the uh, synthetic gear lube I was using has a very high flash point. So um, that's uh, yet another benefit for synthetics, not to mention the uh, anti-wear properties. So this thing's been sitting for a while. It's time to go on a test drive. I've already made sure that um, there are no leaks. I pressure bled the system as well as um, depressed the brake pedal quite a few times as hard as I could making sure that uh, I had a good pedal feel and didn't see any leaks at all. So let's give it a start. been sitting for a while. Oil pressure came right on up. And we're going to drive it easily for a couple of reasons. The uh, brake pads on the rear have that um, coating, that special slightly abrasive coating on them to help the pads bed in. And because of that, you're not going to get the same amount of friction against that rotor as you would um, with a normal pad surface that's been properly bedded in. And uh, I need to build a level of trust and confidence with the car before I get too aggressive with it. So I'm not going to be too crazy, just want to see if uh, 
the car stops properly and the axle shafts don't go flying out sideways into the ditch and that the uh, rotors don't turn cherry red and catch on fire. So if that kind of stuff doesn't happen, I'll be in good shape. stop well ahead of this intersection just to be sure. Car comes right on down. Pedal feels nice and firm. Uh, much easier to stop now it makes me it's further evidence that the uh, rear brakes have really been either non-functional or only marginal and I was only getting front brake action what I'm gonna do now is um, go a little bit slower pace go about 30 I'm gonna grab this parking brake under here See if it'll bring the car to a stop. And it does. Parking brakes check out okay. A lot of people don't do that. The uh, parking brakes, uh, the inside of that rotor, the top hat of that rotor, can actually get some rust buildup in there because a lot of people, especially in a flat area like this, don't use their parking brake. And um, what I try to do at least um, every few weeks, every month, something like that. No matter what kind of car it is, just uh, go at a slow pace like that and engage the parking brake. Make those shoes contact the inside of that rotor and uh, help keep them clean. And uh, that way they'll be very effective. You don't want to have a nasty surprise down the road when you go to use that in a panic situation and you don't have any braking action because you're putting pads against rust. Just want to make sure you test out all the systems. I'm going to go slow again and uh, pretend I've lost my brakes and use the parking brake again. No brake action at all. Car came to a stop, which is good. Go ahead and release. Car came to a very gradual stop. You can definitely tell that the uh, emergency brake is not as powerful as the service brakes, obviously. And now we'll do one more stop. Very nice. Car brakes nice and straight, doesn't pull to one side, and uh, doesn't require a whole lot of pedal effort. Which is actually kind of amazing because of the uh, brake encoding on those rear brakes. Don't allow for a whole lot of friction. Well, 
call this a successful job. It's really kind of a very rewarding and satisfying to uh, be able to do a job like that and uh, keep as many of the original parts as I can, keep the car all original, and uh, functioning as close to factory specifications as I, uh, as I can. Good thing we have good brakes. Just know there'll be all these people spontaneously wanting to turn into that restaurant. It's really good to be behind the wheel of this car again. It's been uh, laid up, I think, since about November. I can't remember when I first made the video. It was, I think it was called Exploratory Surgery, because I didn't know exactly what the problem was. And it's been sitting up all that while. A combination of not having time, and then the weather being really nasty and cold and wet. And the complexity of the job made it take a long time to do, but uh, definitely very rewarding. So just wanted to bring you guys along on a maiden voyage, as it were, for a test drive. Let you know that this car is driving properly, just as it should. And um, I, farther down the road, I'm not sure when, I want to go ahead and replace the front brake lines as well, too. And maybe rebuild the front calipers, now that I have a bit more confidence now on how to do that on the rear calipers. There's nothing wrong with them. They seem to be functioning properly, but uh, due to the age of the car, just want to break them open and see what's going on and clean them all up and just do a complete and thorough job. I don't know how old the brake lines are on the front. I don't think they're original, but since it's an unknown, it's uh, better to go ahead and uh, go ahead and replace them. They're cheap enough. Very cheap insurance. Definitely don't want to have an accident in this car, it's irreplaceable for the most part. So I hope you guys find that video series helpful in whole or in part, depending upon what you want to do to your W108, or pretty much any Mercedes, early Mercedes with a swing axle independent rear suspension. And uh, hope to be able to refer those videos and do some of your own work, save some money.